Welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am joined by Emra Sapahi from Bosphorus Symbols. Emra, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm good, man. Thanks so much. We've, we've, uh, it's just kind of funny. We've had some back and forths. I looked at our email originally, and the last email before we reset this up was, Hey, Emra, I need to reschedule. I have surgery on my ankle tomorrow. So I had, uh, a lot of people who listen know that I tore my Achilles tendon and we were supposed to have the interview the day that I had surgery. Um, so I appreciate your, um, <laughs> your patience, but you're very much welcome. No problem. Yeah. We are here though. So we're here today. It's, it's, it's 8 AM where I live and it's 4 PM in Turkey. Um, so we're, we're pretty far apart, but, um, yeah. So on that note, I would love to hear the origins of Bosphorus symbols. And let me say this now. So I don't forget. I want to thank Rafael Zimmerman and Alejandro Perez for suggesting this topic. And I'm pretty sure a couple other people did too, um, a way back that I, I hadn't written down yet. Um, so thank you to those guys. Um, okay. Emra, why don't you start and tell us the origins of Bosphorus symbols? Okay. The origin of Bosphorus symbols is an organic connection directly with the symbol history started in Turkey back in 1800s. Uh, as you already know, might know, uh, that uh, the symbols were invented in this land because Ottoman Empire used the music in army for the first time in the history. And that was a mobile orchestra with percussion instruments and there were symbols in it. So because of this demand, people were trying to make the best symbols or best sound. And then someone came up with a new alloy of bronze. And actually he accidentally invented it while he was trying to uh, make gold. Yeah. You, you know that story? I, I've, I've heard a bit. I mean, I mean, I guess I'm, it kind of goes to the, the other big company that, yeah. that that's a part of yeah. their story. And, um, yeah. So, yeah. uh, they were trying to find the formula of gold because they were not aware, aware that that was an element. So, uh, they had this, uh, new bronze alloy and they found out that it, it has a very nice vibration to sound. And then they started to make symbols out of it. And those symbols became very successful. And they were the, the family, whole family, adopted by the Sultan in Istanbul to produce the best symbols for his army. So they moved to Istanbul to the palace, and then they started their independent company in 1800s. And they did it for over a century in Istanbul. And then uh, Ottoman Empire was ended. And so the business was almost done. Uh, luckily, this uh, symbols became a part of symphonic orchestras in European music. So there was little some, st still some little demand. And uh, the original family moved from Istanbul to United States, but they left some people behind here. And those people who kept the original factory open until 1979. Yeah. And in, the, in 1979, they closed the original factory in Istanbul and they fired uh, the workers. Mm -hmm. And those workers got reunited and started Istanbul Symbols Company in 1980. And my bosses, which are three equal partners, was three little kids in the neighborhood, like 10, 11 years old. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of a tradition that getting kids into a summer job while the schools were closed. So 
So there, one of them was started to work for this new symbol company. And he brought two other friends. And their first duty in the workshop to clean around and carry the stuff between symbol smiths, that kind of stuff. But yeah. also they started to be trained as a symbol smith. And they started to be uh, making, learn how to make symbols from them. And that uh, take 16 years. They worked for the company for 16 years straight. They became master symbolsmith. And original uh, symbolsmith who was coming from the old factory was retired or passed away. And then this new symbol company in Istanbul started to become famous. And then they had new workers, more people inside. And these three guys who were the first hired papils of the original masters decided to move on to their own company in 1996. Hmm. So the idea was keeping the tradition alive because Every symbol company took the same path before Vosper symbols. When they had more demand than their capacity, they started to use shortcuts to make more symbols with less labor. It's mm. machinery or different things. So, but the product was not the same product anymore. So my bosses, three partners of Basra Symbols was aware of that and they were warning their bosses, you're not making the same symbols anymore. But, and yeah. but nobody listened to them. They were just workers. So that's the, how the idea started Phosphorus. Let's do a company with the tradition, with the way that our masters taught us. So they... They were just three young guys without any money almost. So they found a music shop downtown in Istanbul who wanted to invest in a new symbol company. So they became partners with that music shop. And that guy invested money to buy the necessary uh, hardware and tools and everything. And in 1996, somewhere around February, they produced the first symbol here. Wow. And you know what? The guy who invested into this company, he was not even believing these guys. He said, until I see you have the first symbol in your hand with a good sound, I just try to take an adventure because the money that he invested <laughs> was not a serious money for himself. So, wow, that's nice for him. <laughs> so he just wanted to take the risk. He wouldn't lose anything, that's what he said. But hmm. when the first symbol came out from Basra symbols, when the shop owner came to the workshop and tried it, he cried. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he cried. He said, Oh my God, this is the symbol that my father used to buy from that old foundry. Mm. You see, he cried because he, he was not able to find that symbol anymore. Jeez, that's um, pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> so they started to produce symbols. That shop owner found a guy in the United States who wanted to uh, distribute the symbols in the United States. And then there was a guy for artist relations uh, and who brought Jeff Hamilton to Bosphor Symbols because mm -hmm. Jeff was very angry with his sponsor back in that time, the endorsing symbol company, because he finally found out 
his symbols was not really handmade. Yeah. That's the, that's the story that I listened from Jeff Hamilton himself, hmm. face to face. Uh, so, me, so he, he, his previous company, he, he found out they weren't actually fully handmade, is what you're saying. And then, yeah, he, he didn't he, like that. Yeah, he, he was angry with that. It was a, he said it was a NAM show. When I find out, I went to the, their booth and I said, you're not making my symbols with hand anymore. And they said, yes. And he said, he would not play them anymore. And then wow. this artist relations guy, hook him up just in front of the booth and brought him to the phosphorus booth. Hey, Jeff, let's try these. These are the old kind of symbols that you used to play. And he tried and he liked that. And then he came mm. to, to the factory in Istanbul several times, developed the uh, signature line together. Nice. So that's how it happened. So when yeah. Jeff Hamilton signed up, for Bosphorus, it was a huge marketing, and then other guys followed him, and uh, Bosphorus became the probably the third or fourth important symbol brand in the market yeah. back in that. It's time. hard to you really have to have a big player. You know what I mean? You have to, and you guys have multiple, but like until you get, you know. You need you need drummers out there using your stuff. And Jeff Hamilton, obviously, he's very um, in a good way. He's very particular and uh, picky about what he uses. And um, when people see that, and it's just you know, then he's using your stuff, and people hear about it. And otherwise, it's probably symbols aren't cheap, so symbols are pretty expensive. So you kind of want to see a famous drummer using it, and then you can go, oh, okay, that's. I'll buy that now, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way it happens. Uh, it's, it's a pity that these days now we see those big names drummers these days today. Uh, they are not after the symbol quality and sound anymore. They're more like businessmen making business deals. So that's yeah. the sad part. Uh, it was not like that back in 1996. I know that, but today is too too much different now. Yeah. How long have you worked with um with the company? Because you are the international sales director. How how long have you been with Boston? This is my twelfth year. Wow. Okay. So I'm almost half of the history. Yeah. That's awesome. It's not, you know, in the big picture of some companies being, you know, four hundred years old or even um 1979 1980 um yeah the big picture still pretty young yeah i know i know the 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 thing is uh, there was just one single company in istanbul back in that time and uh, after the big guys moved away from here there were just one company and the boss was the second one of them so Hmm. and and actually boss for us is the last company who has the organic uh, connection with the history. The, yeah. the companies coming after Bosphorus do not have this organic connection with the uh, history of symbol. Yeah, there's, um, and I have an episode um, about um, uh, with Istanbul, Agop. Um, about their connection and obviously it goes the connection to the original big the big z company um is very um it's neat that it stems off of that and then the you know it's it's it happens in business a lot but when that company left and came to america i mean a lot of people had to lose their jobs right i mean it had to have been kind of a um well what do we do now and then um, that's just, it's, it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting how that worked. And then these other little companies started yeah. like you guys. Yeah. The, uh, the idea having the company factory in Istanbul, uh, was kind of protecting the history. And I, even today, I really having a hard time to understand how did they decided to shut it down. 
So, <laughs> but yeah. that's a good yeah. good thing for myself. So we have Bosphorus sure. now. <laughs> yeah, good. It all worked out. I mean, um, okay. So then you know, with the company history there. So obviously, Jeff Hamilton. Um, I, you guys kind of seem like one of those companies where it's not like every year you're coming out with a bunch of new, crazy, different, you know, stacks and things like that. It seems like you have your formula and you stick with it and you're very historically, you know, um, accurate. Were there any big, you know, milestone moments through the two thousands, you know, in the, as the company grew? Okay. Uh, the basic, the most important thing what Bosphorus did in symbol industry is actually, you know, before Bosphorus, there were traditional Turkish style symbols and then the other generic symbols. And they were defining dark and dry symbol as the heavy and thick symbols. But mm. well, when Bosphorus came out, uh, Bosphorus started to make really, really amazing craftsmanship on the symbols with processing extremely thin and small bell symbols, which we call today Master, Master Vintage Series. That, way. They were, that was a really big invention for its symbol market because that was the first time when extremely thin dark and dry symbols came out. So that was the beginning with Bosphorus. And then all other symbol companies followed it to start to make dark, dry, thin symbols. And uh, Bosphorus mm -hmm. is probably the only company in the world who can make that thin, that flexible, and having this earthy tone in it. Since it's handmade, because if you if you don't make this symbol hundred percent with hand, it will not succeed through the mechanic process. It's that thing. Yeah. Can can we talk a little bit about the hand making process? Because I think a lot of companies are saying, um, which I'm sure they are. I'm never, you know, judging one company one way or another, but. So to be a handmade symbol, you guys sound like you are very, very true. Like these are 100% made by hand. So um, can you maybe tell us that process of, of how a symbol is, is made when it's okay. really, really handmade in Turkey? Okay. First of all, we have this, uh, br the, to make the bronze, we have this copper and tin, the copper mm -hmm. must be 99.99% .99 pure. And uh, you have to melt it down with the fire of coal with the help of air fans to make it burn faster and get higher mm -hmm. temperature. Today, most of the companies who make their own casting, they use this electric and gas combination uh, casting systems, which we don't have. We have, if, if you check the videos of Basra symbols, we still have this hole in on the ground, put the fire in it with coal. And then when it is lit up, we put the mold inside the hole hmm. to melt the copper and add the tin in it. So when the bronze when it becomes a bronze glow, it's almost 1,800 Celsius degrees. Jeez. And Celsius degrees. And even we are having a hard time to find a mold to, <laughs> to melt that copper at that temperature because the companies who are producing this melting molds, they say these days nobody goes over that temperatures even for iron. So that's what they say. And we still having this old fashioning melting, which is putting the carbon in the bronze during the fire process. And then 
we cast the liquid uh, bronze into the pans just with hand you know we just hang we have a tool hanging the mold and then we just pour the liquid metal into these pens one by one without measuring the weight just by oh. eyesight you must wow. you must be an expert you must be a really monster otherwise it's, it will be like two heavy pieces impossible to make thin symbols or you just very hard is whatever you see on the factory videos is 100 percent real and we do that every week so it must it's a real big experience to see it on your own eyes if you come here someday or somebody likes to come here because we accept visitors to show the casting because people don't mm -hmm. know really don't know they they don't know what how it does it feel to pour down 1,800 Celsius degrees hot metal. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then wow. we have this, another furnace we light up with wood and, uh, and burning wood is not something cheap these days because, you know, you have to get licensed wood uh, the mm. government is involved to the process. Every any wood piece coming to your factory is registered because wow. uh, yeah, of course, because um, you can. Otherwise, you just uh, you know the the forest cutters, illegal forest cutters, sure, can, can make money over you, which is not good. So we are buying licensed, registered wood cutters and the all the wood that we buy is coming from government approval and all the documents are legal that's that's a hard process also i've never thought about that but it makes sense people yeah. alter, the alternative is people just like cutting down forests and you know yeah, yeah. so so we we need special kind of trees to burn because it has to be high temperature and taking a long time to burn out. So, so we, bur we light up this furnace, heat the disc, cast the disc to uh, scroll them through the pressing cylinders again and again and again. After every time it goes back into furnace, gets hot and soft again, then take it out and roll it again. Just like making pizza, you're, you're opening up the dough pizza makers are making it with hand we have to heat them yeah. and roll them through the press cylinders and even the smallest splash symbol should be passing through this uh rolling cylinders at least six or seven times think mm -hmm. about the big rice for 24 26 inches sure yeah so and then when the plate is big and thin enough no, we we press the bell in the middle uh, one more time with the heating, and then it's ready to be hammered. So we just cut it into a perfect circle, and then start to hammer it to shape it like a symbol. And then mm -hmm. it, from that point, a symbol is hammered at least six to 10 hours wow so and then getting laded again hammered you know some of our symbols has no lading on them and mm -hmm. that that means the symbol the plate itself must be that light from the casting so that's yeah that's crazy because you know have you ever Checked our master vintage ride. That's twenty-two inch ride with less than three kilograms, like two and a half, yeah. two and a half, two and a two point seventy-five kilograms, and has no lading on it. And getting that roll through pressing cylinders hot, getting the bell pressed on it, cutting it out in circle, and then hammering it for six, ten hours without breaking. That's a tough work. Yeah, I um, 
I just can't believe that uh, that they don't that they're just kind of doing it by eye, and you're not really measuring it, or you're not saying, all right, l- like a um, like an ingot or whatever. I'm probably saying that wrong, but like like you know, like the gold, yeah. like the like the like a chunk of metal. Yeah, that's just so. Um, well, that that I guess speaks to how each symbol slightly is is one of a kind. I would imagine. Yeah, actually, that's kind of our philosophy. The Bosphorus is against standardization uh, yep. because well, what we tell here to our workers every day and to the visitors. So standardization is against the creative rule of art. So you can have Mona Lisa, but printed copies of Mona Lisa is not that valuable, right? <laughs> No. So no, that's a good point. So every single master symbol is kind of original Mona Lisa. So so it's it's not copy. No, and what's interesting, and um, so America or Canada, there's just very stringent like safety guidelines, and of course, I don't. I'm not saying that you guys aren't safe because you sound like you're complete masters, but. The, f- the way that you can make the symbols, and even when I watch the video and there's just like bubbling like molten metal and it's just very like natural and raw, here in America, there seems to be such uh, more like the government has these these like safety, you know, regulations and all this where you couldn't maybe do the, the, the classic style of symbol making that you guys have mastered. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it I'm seems aware like- of that. I'm really aware of that. And that's not, yeah. I, it's not the first time that I hear about it, but uh, I need to, I think, mention about something. First of all, uh, in Turkey, the legal working age is 16. Yeah. So after 16 years old, you can start to work legally in any job you like to work. So most of the Bosphorus workers started about that age, 1670s. Hmm. And we don't let anybody to go near the hot metal or something before they he fully understands what's going on in there. And it takes like three, four sure. years. So, yeah. uh, and it really takes a very long time to train a symbol cement. And yeah. it's a really long process. I that's something I tell to most of my friends that it's probably much easier to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's probably safer. I mean, again, not that you're not safe, but but there's less danger. <laughs> Actually, when you're in here, you you feel that it's not that dangerous because everybody is sure. expert on what they're doing and. Uh, in the, this course. is the 25th year of Bosphorus, and uh, I'm glad to tell that we never had even one single serious injury during doing this job in here. Nobody injured yeah. in Bosphorus in 25 years. Yeah, small things. That's yeah, great. you can just cut your finger and put a tape on it, and that, yeah, that's, that's a simple thing. You know, that, that happens at home. So that kind of things, but never nobody gets seriously injured in Bosphorus since 25 years. We never get an ambulance in the factory, not even once. Wow. You guys having that um, mastery of pouring these and doing this and it's more, it's, it's almost like uh it's obviously smaller, like most companies than the, the big, the big, you know, two or yeah. three or whatever. So you guys can be more, you know, attentive and have these masters. How many employees does Bosphorus have? We are all like 23, 24 people here. Wow, that's pretty small. I mean, that's great. I just love it because you can, yeah, you know, when you get a symbol, it's, it's special. Yeah, and we make only 20 to 30 symbols a day. Hmm. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's what we do. And that yeah. makes about little more than 10,000 symbols a year. Yeah, which is still pretty, that's 
still, in my opinion, a lot of symbols. I mean, but, um, but obviously, to the biggest company produces two and a half million. So, <laughs> oh my God, I didn't know that. So, so yeah, yeah. so we are kind of still boutique, small company. The name of Bosphorus is much bigger than it is physically exists, and that's because of this uh, craftsmanship and the very detailed uh, process that we follow without any excuses since 25 yeah. years. Yeah, which that's great that that and and I've found that I have found that on episodes with. Uh, Vic Firth, Pearl, Yamaha, these companies where they, a lot of people will say, yeah, people think we're a massive, huge company, but there's actually, we're not that big where, and I'm kind of thinking, I agree with them, but I'm also like, okay, Pearl, you are big, like (laughs) compared to smaller companies. But I mean, I think it's great that your name has spread and that, that obviously goes to, um, you know, uh, speak to the, the quality and all that, uh, that stuff. Are you guys, um, and I've played some, um, I believe I played, I've played them at a drum show and then I believe I tried some out at, uh, there's badges drum shop here in Cincinnati. Um, and I believe yeah. last time I was there, I was hitting a Bosphorus, uh, ride and it sounded amazing. Are you guys typically, is there any specific kind of music that you guys cater to more like jazz or rock? What, what or is it just all kinds of music? Uh, we are a symbol company. We produce symbols. It doesn't matter which genre it's going to be played for. Symbol yeah. is a symbol. So uh, that's something uh, became quite uh, the basic understanding in the recent years, but it's not true. You, you don't have a symbol company for jazz music. You don't have a symbol company for blues music. That's that's not true. That's 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 a wrong opinion in my uh, understanding. So sure. Bosphorus is more preferred by the jazz drummers. That's a reality because they are playing in more acoustic situations and with less amps, less mics, and probably in smaller venues and. Yeah. Uh, and you hear the symbol much more than other music types. So the sound of symbol is much more important than other genres, maybe. So, mm-hmm. uh, sure. so, but according to my understanding, any drummer who really listens to the tone of the symbol can play Bosphorus. Yeah. Wow. Well put. I mean, that's, that's a good, um, if you are, I mean, nowadays I would, I would assume if you're a, you know, a symbol company making, we just make, you know, jazz symbols, you can't survive doing that because that's, there's not enough, you know, you know what I mean? It, you gotta be, um, uh, you, you have to make them for everyone. Have you guys found that, um, I, I feel like in, in the recent years, there's been more, more symbols coming up in different from different countries like i know here in america there's some really cool uh smaller companies some some guys like nikki moon who's a friend and then ray burn from burn symbols there's there's other symbol makers um coming up around the world um i'm sure that's you know it's good for the love of symbols to have more people involved and that it's carrying on but obviously that's tricky for business when when there's there's more people making symbols there's less uh there's more uh competition have you noticed that recently uh yeah that's what we call it they're pumping up right mushrooms every day (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, but it's not a uh, something bad for us because we are already uh a boutique company that yeah uh, really a small amount of capacity manufacturing. So we already sell every single symbol we make. So that's yeah. the that's the problem of big boys, not us. <laughs> sure. 
Yeah, you guys are established, and um, and I, I great answer because I was hoping it was like you know, it's there's plenty of room out there, and and I think like I said that there's those guys are great, um, make amazing symbols. You make amazing symbols. I think um, you know that's a good point of like, you know, you're you're established, but maybe the big 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 boys out there, they might it might be a little bit um, you know. Oh, uh, you know, uh oh, I think people are liking these boutique symbol brands a lot. Like, it's almost like, in my opinion, you see on like Instagram and stuff, it's cool to have non major symbol brands. Like, you have boutique uh, brands, it's becoming yeah. more cool. Okay, uh, let me uh, give you a, a underline uh, some insider view. When. Cool. The big guys shut down the factory in 1979. Why another symbol company established in Istanbul? Because music industry, the drummers, some of them immediately realized what they have lost. Mm. The, the, this handmade symbol business is the soul of the drummers, because a, otherwise you cannot sound different. Because it's like the same difference between electronic keyboards and acoustic pianos. And so this is like yeah. we are when you have this handmade symbol, you're the only guy who have this sound plate on your drum and exactly so some drummers i'm not sure how many how many of them maybe 25 to 30 percent of total drummers in the world has really serious uh intention about this matter they don't want to lose their sound they they mm -hmm. want to be unique they want to be the one and only with that instrument because you cannot tune the cymbals Sure. Oh, yeah. you cannot amp the symbol. The guitar player can put a different amp and can sound different, but you cannot do that with symbol. So I'm very happy that the drummers, more and more drummers, are being aware of that. So the question is why these boutique symbol companies coming up? Because there's a demand. So mm -hmm. the question is, why other the big symbol companies cannot feed this demand and then other symbol companies can survive? So that's the big question yeah. mark for themselves. They have to ask themselves. So Yeah, I really do enjoy the symbols of, of the big companies, of the small ones. I think they're all great. But but I do think there's there's something about supporting something smaller um, but on that note, I have a question about, so I've never been to, um, Turkey. I would love to go, but, um, is there, obviously there's, uh, there's other symbol, you guys are your own, you know, you're doing something very unique, but there's other symbol makers in Turkey. Is there like a competition between you and like the, the Istanbul factory who again has been on the show and our friends, um, is there kind of a, a, a competition between the Turkish brands that you can feel going on it's really hard to tell because you know yeah of course in the business wise we are competitors but yeah be, my bosses will, uh, have been working with them for 16 years so it's, it's they have this friendly relationship with each other and when we meet the, during the trade shows or any day uh they talk to each other friendly so so yeah. since as i can tell that the whole symbol business in turkey is less than 10 percent of the global market mm -hmm. so competing each other is not really doesn't make sense so no. there's a huge 90 plus person to market out there so so mostly every symbol maker in turkey is after that portion not 
from each other's portion. Sure. Yeah. No, that's a great answer. Um, okay. So, um, obviously it's COVID right now. It's February 8th, 2021 when we're recording this, um, COVID has been tough for everyone. So there's no shows and all this stuff, but, um, is there anything new and cool that you guys are working on in the future or is it, uh, kind of just sticking with the traditional, you know, uh, everything that's been, been great or, you know, what, what's going on in the future with Bosphorus? Okay, this is our 25th anniversary. So we have been working on a new symbol line, like anniversary of 25th, because we have launched 20th anniversary five years ago. And now it would be a good idea to make a 25th anniversary symbol. And we did it. It's, it's almost ready. But we postponed the launch of the line. Uh, to some date that we don't know yet. Probably it will be launched this year. Since the NAM has canceled and nobody knows if the Germany show is going to be happen, happening or not. So we will, we are trying to launch that new line for anniversary of 25th year in this year. So we don't want to leave it for next year, but who knows, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, I was curious from Googling it, Bosphorus is a town or mm -hmm. like what is Bosphorus? Okay, Bosphorus is a strait. Uh, it's between Black Sea to Marmara Sea, which is an inlet sea of Turkey. So the Marmara Sea is just like a big lake which is connected to the Black Sea in the north and connected to the Aegean Sea on the west. Uh, so there are two straits. One of them is Bosphorus. The other one is Gallipoli. Yeah. So Bosphorus is the strait, just goes like a river in the middle of Istanbul and divides Istanbul into two parts with European side and Asian side. So mm. we have this because the, if you check the Turkey map, uh, the... 75% of the country is a part of Asian continent, and then 25% of the country is part of European continent. And Bosphorus is just in the middle. Interesting. I would love to go uh, and visit uh, my brother's friend growing up. His family would go there and post pictures of it, and it just looks beautiful. I mean, it seems like it such is. a cool place to visit. It is. Uh, there's something that I tell to people who like to visit Istanbul. Istanbul has never experienced a war since 1453. <laughs> so the history is all there. So we have right. a mosque by the Bosphorus, which we call New Mosque, and it was made in 1600s. Wow. So, uh, so uh, you know, the Europe continent and most of the places on earth was demolished by the first world war and second world war and yeah. istanbul didn't experience that so that's all history since the byzantine empire age so you can see the walls the roman empire walls, and then the ottoman buildings all everything so it's just like a magic yeah Man, that's I've never thought about that. You 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 kind of take for granted that like everywhere is like that, but there's um where where they're, you know, at a certain point things got destroyed and rebuilt, but um what a cool way to look at it. Um you know, someday hopefully I'll I'll be around there and uh check out the factory. Now now that seems unlikely with the way the world is, <laughs> you know, with uh, Whatever you like to be my guest. Yeah, I wish. I wish sooner than later. Um Okay, Emra, why don't we tell people where they can... Uh, well, first, is there any other cool... Uh, any other thing that I, you think I missed that we should kind of, uh, you know, talk about, about Bosphorus? Um, okay, uh, first of all, it's a long-time challenge for me that, first of all, people should understand that handmade symbol, 100% handmade symbol, is not the same thing with hand hammer symbol. Hmm. So hand hammer symbol means the symbol is made and finished by hand. 100% um, handmade symbol. 
I think the Bosphorus is the only company who uses that because this is the truth. Uh, so they must be understanding the difference because people say, oh, you're not cheap. You're not cheap, but we are not expensive too. Most of Bosphorus symbols models are, has, are in, in the market is lower cost than machine made symbols. That's not fair. But of course, yeah. we accept that this is the market situation. So uh, I, I really wanted to underline that one more time. And uh, the second thing is, uh, Bosphorus is working very hard to have a consistent quality with the symbols. But when it's handmade, it's your personal choice. So you can have video demonstrations, sound demonstrations, or you can play yourself, go to the store and play yourself. But you must be selected your Bosphorus symbol in person. Mm. That, that's the way it has to be. So Yeah, that's that's a good point. As I'm uh I was just looking up some of the prices and it brought up Amazon. And right as you said that I'm like, yeah, you can't buy a handmade symbol on Amazon or um you know a website because you have to hear it which um you know so maybe if if you don't have a shop in your city or town or whatever that that carries them you might have to you know drive a little bit or um visit one of the drum shows yeah there are some shops who are making video demonstrations for each symbol they have in stock so you know yeah. what you're getting before you buy it or or some some of them make sound demonstrations or some of them are video demonstrations. That really works well too. Uh, yeah. We never get a complaint about it, but uh, sure. you need to select it in any type, but you, you need to hear it before you buy it. Yeah, and they're really not that expensive i mean like you you said they're 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 lower if not competitive with the um the big boys um and they're beautiful symbols i mean they are just so cool looking um and i, I like your logo a lot too um, Thank you. so Thank you. all right well then everyone needs to turn this off and go out and try some bosphorus symbols right now <laughs> and uh because they're one of a kind man that's that's so cool well um all right so people can go to bosphorus symbols.com b o s p h o r u s symbols.com um and again i want to thank rafael zimmerman and alejandro perez for suggesting this and i'm pretty sure i'm forgetting a couple other people who suggested this a while back so if you did then thank you um to you too but um cool well um emra man i appreciate you taking the time and being so patient and kind of rescheduling with me a few times no um, problem, to do no this. Problem. Cause that's a pleasure for me. You know, I, I go into all these so, sort of knowing, but I really didn't know um, too much about Bosphorus really. And I'm, I'm so happy to learn more about it. And I really enjoyed hearing the difference between hand hammered and handmade. Cause you, you don't, you know, you don't think about that too much. Um, and that, that's really neat to put it in perspective like that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to have this chance to get out some words for Bosphorus. So thank you for inviting me to do this. Oh, my pleasure. You did a great job. So, all right, Emra, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Bye-bye. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate, and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning.